Saudi Arabia is one of the most enigmatic 20th century Iranian authors. After the long period of pre-revolutionary intentional marginalization, he has once again moved to the very center of contemporary Iranian literary and intellectual debates. This Hedayat resurgence is in part due to the efforts of Omar Khatuzian, who has written and edited a number of books on him. More importantly, the Hedayat resurgence is shaped by the current historical, cultural, and political concerns that parallel the those of the first part of the 20th century. Like other modernists of his generation, Hedayat sought to expose the false piety and religious duplicity of his contemporaries in critical anthropological short stories like Seeking Absolution, Kalaba Amurzesh, The Absolver, Muhallel, The Man Who Killed His Ego, Madrike, Nafsash Rakosh, and Madame Alavie, Alavie all of these innovative narratives were intended to expose the false everyday piety. Like Husseini Kazimzadeh Iran Shah, Sadele, Reza Zadeh, Shafa, Ahmad Kasravi, and his other contemporaries who wrote retrospectively on Iranian subjectivity and character, Nafs and Shafsiyat, Hedayat, devise an intro, introspective self-narrative which Homo Khatuzian has characterized as psycho-fiction. In these soul-searching and self-interrogating narratives, Hedayat explored a schizophrenic and a schizophrenic self that was concurrently ancient and contemporary, Aryan and Arab, Zoroastrian and Muslim. A product of inherited thoughts, Afkore, Morusi, this fractured self had a surmised and jargonized existence according to Hedaya Bujude Mogumu Muzakra. Like the mother Iran, Mother of kind of his contemporary political discourse, this fractured self that was exposed in buried alive in the Begur and blind owl of the food was simultaneously suicidal and immortal ruin hand. And it appeared to oneself as an alien being or dami begani. Losing its humanity, this retrospective self, particularly in Bufakur, was haunted by memory and forgetting the past and the future retrospection, past negari, and prospection, fishing. The self that Hidayat psychoanalyzed and psycho narrated was a self. That was exceptionally similar to the historical lamentation on the desperate conditions of con his contemporary Iran. This, like his contemporaries, nostalgic retreat from, from degenerate contemporary Persia to a magnanimous ancient Iran. Please remember that. At that time, Persia, in the early part of the 20th century, identified with Iran, was a negative thing. And Iran, that became the, 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 the name in uh, non-Persian languages, was, uh, was supposed to revitalize Iran's ancient heritage and was identified with uh, glory. Uh, so Hedayat, uh, Hedayat's fixed itself admitted that in this going back and forth that often to forget, to escape from myself, I recall my days of childhood, and, in, and this recalling was both national and personal. This intense desire for forgetting 
via a creative remembering of a remote past was a distinct feature of of the works of Hedayat and his romantic contemporaries. Ashamed and dissatisfied with the existing order of things in the early 20, 20th century, post-constitutionalist Iran, they sought to create an arcotopia, what I recall, I call Nakoja Wad Bastani, an archaic and archaeologically informed past that consoled their sense of inferiority in comparison with contemporary Europeans, a sense of the past that, that was cogently explained in Kachuzian's Sadr al-Hidayat. The active remembrance of an antique past often served as a scenario for the making of a modern future. Hidayat was very aware of the shifting notion of the ideal past and the ideal future. The political Iranian self, he had observed, that trans traversed the full hermeneutic circle of escaping from the contemporary Islam of the 1920s to an imaginary ancient Iran, and from the present manufactured in the image of that past in the 1930s back to a re-venerated socialist Islam of the 1940s, a new imagined Islamic past that Hedayat <coughs> satirized in the Tupe Morbari, the Morbari canon. Thus, by the 1940s, the earlier nationalist project of purging Arabic from Persian was displaced with a project for purging the Islamic nation of non-Muslim political religions. Observing these disturbing vacillations, <coughs> Hedayat came to characterize the spiritually seeding Iran, Iran Minu Nishan, as a Stinkistan, Gandistan. Whereas in his early works, Hedayat utilized history for the making of a particularistic Aryan Iran in Morbari Canon. One of his characters observed that, quote, one of the distinctive, one of the distinctions of every new generation is to forget the trials of their predecessors. According to this, his view, quote again, one of the benefits of <coughs> historical studies is that one becomes pessimistic about the progress and the future of humanity applied to Iranian history. He punningly observed that Iranian, that the history of the guarded domain, <coughs> begins with the Pishtadiyan and ends with Pastadiyan. Whereas the Pishtadiyans were viewed as anterior Iranians, Pastadiyan were the contemporary or posterior Iranians. Playing on the double meaning of the prefix pish, front, and pass, rear, and the verb dadan, Hedayat made a historiographical sexual innuendo about what Nietzsche had identified in another context as the use and abuse of history. This type of irrelevance distinguished Hedayat from most of his hyper nationalist contemporaries. Despite his earlier racial pure purist impulse, it is this critical cultural self-examination and retrospection that is the hallmark of Sadr Hedayat in my view. Thank you. Homo I distinguish. And all